welcome to this edition of The Current Report, our weekly roundup of what's happening in the world of digital media. Well, it's been only seven months since the 2022 World Cup, but fans around the world are all too ready for the next big global soccer tournament. Make that football if you're from outside the USA. On July 20th, the FIFA Women's World Cup 2023 kicks off Down Under, where it's being co-hosted by Australia and New Zealand. The 2023 tournament's bigger than ever is expanded from 24 teams to 32, an indication of the level of interest that the women's game is attracting. More than a billion people watched in 2019, and some estimate that this time viewership could be double that. In the words of the FIFA vice president, women's football is exploding around the world. Of course, all of this has big implications for advertisers who see this tournament as a tentpole opportunity to reach fans around the globe, and especially women. And joining me now to talk about the World Cup is our reporter in Sydney, Emma Shepherd. Hi, Emma. Hi, how are you? I'm very well, thanks. So anticipation is clearly building for the Women's World Cup in Australia and New Zealand. What's going on down there? It certainly is. The excitement is just electrifying uh, and very infectious down here in Australia and New Zealand. Uh, we're starting to see some of the really big brands uh, releasing their Women's World Cup campaigns, the likes of uh, Tourism New Zealand, Commonwealth Bank um, and Optus Sport. Uh, they, you know, as much as they're wanting to, you know, get their brand in front of a mass audience and leveraging the sport um, to do so, I think it's very much more around uh, you know, uh, brands aligning themselves with a cultural moment. Um, but yeah, you know, it's it's going to be exciting to see what else comes out from the other the other brands and and sponsors uh, as well, because you know it is about kind of connecting their brand to diehard football fans and uh, yeah, and that and that cultural moment. So yeah, looking looking forward to seeing the other creatives that come out. Yeah, it seems that women's sports have sort of reached this inflection point now where they've reached new levels of global popularity. I mean, why is this event at this moment such a big deal for advertisers? The interest from advertisers have definitely been, um, you know, like unprecedented, which was described by Optus Sport. Um, they've seen nothing like it. It's almost like a bit of an advertising frenzy, if, if you'd like. Um, and it's really a signal that women's sports... Um, is you know being acknowledged as a major, major draw for viewers, um, and it was just last month that the CEO of FIFA Women's World Cup, uh, David Beach, estimated that around two billion people uh, globally will be watching the event, um, which is just an incredible reach, uh, and that's obviously why it's such a huge appeal for advertisers as well. And things have changed a lot, even in the last four years. What's different this time around? How are the broadcasters and the streaming platforms now getting strategic? about helping those ads reach this audience? Yeah, so Optus Sports, as I mentioned earlier, um, they've actually got the full sport code rights uh, for all 64 games. Um, but on top of showing and streaming the live matches, uh, they'll also be offering seven different uh, you know, versions of each game for viewers to enjoy. These versions include condensed mini-match, which is uh, capturing the entire game within 15 minutes, a slightly longer mega mini, which is spanning uh, 30 minutes, and the option to watch each half separately on demand. Uh, and then Channel 7 down here, uh, they're a free-to-air network. Uh, they hold the free-to-air rights for the tournament. Uh, so they'll be covering every uh, Matilda's game um, among 15 games during that tournament, which will be broadcast live and free on their uh, free-to-air and also their BVOD platform, 7Play. Uh, and a really interesting to note that this time round, for the first time in FIFA's history, they're going to be uh, trialling squeezebacks uh, and that's no doubt getting advertisers really excited down here too, and globally. And that's definitely a new term for me. I should just say, you said Matildas. I, I think that's the name of the Australian team, right? <laughs> yes, that's that's correct. And you'll you'll know the you'll know the name after this tournament. That's for sure. <laughs> and let's get back to squeezebacks, if we can. Um, yeah. What is that? Can you explain it? Now, squeezebacks is an ad format that reduces the live game. Um, and, you know, it, it allows items such as logos, text calls and graphics to be seen on the main display area for around four to five seconds. So viewers will be able to, you know, still enjoy that uninterrupted live game. But this gives advertisers, you know, another fresh avenue for broad brand promotion um, within the game. And I think FIFA understands that um, 
you know, FIFA and Optus Sport understand that advertising plays a pivotal role in ensuring the long-term sustainability of the game. So this is all really good news for advertisers. Yeah, it sounds like they're getting kind of innovative around the game. Back to the game, the defending champs are the US and they've won it four times. But also I understand England are second favourites. They won the European Cup last summer. Are you going to be watching, Emma? I mean, how are the Aussies looking, the Matildas? Uh, absolutely, I'll be watching, Damien. I'm a huge football fan. Uh, and despite not securing tickets, I'll be definitely cheering on the Matildas uh, from the lounge room. And I'm hoping for a win on home soil. Well, uh, all the best to your team and may the best team win. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Next, everything old is new again. At least that's what some people are saying when it comes to the changing economics of streaming television. This week, the HBO comedy drama Insecure launched on Netflix, a surprising move perhaps, given the competition between the rival platforms. It's part of a co-exclusive licensing partnership between Netflix and Max, formerly known as HBO Max, which is owned by Warner Brothers Discovery. Netflix has also confirmed that Band of Brothers, Six Feet Under and Ballers will launch on its platform. Other companies, including Disney and Paramount, have said they see value in licensing out some of their content to third parties as a way to boost revenues. Turning a profit from streaming has proved a challenge for many. While the strategy may be new to streaming players like Disney Plus and Max, licensing and syndication is a tried and true technique for the media companies who own them. And for more on this story, go to thecurrent.com. Next, our weekly roundup of what's making news across the internet. And on the subject of Netflix, the streaming company is looking to develop targeted and tailor-made advertising formats as it builds out its ad-supported offering. That's according to a report in the Financial Times. Netflix, which made its official debut at the Cannes Lions Festival in France last month, is looking to build more bespoke marketing solutions for advertisers. One of those innovations could include episodic campaigns that would build storyline and avoid consumers seeing the same ad over and over. And that's it for this edition of The Current Report. For a deeper dive on all of these stories and more, check out thecurrent.com. We'll see you next week. Music